Why Microsoft? Why? I'm Santi. This is the Game Design Perspective, and I've been a senior game designer for some years now, and uh, I've been in the game industry for around 10 years. Of all these years, I think this is one of the worst decisions I've seen in the video game industry. Again, this is my opinion, my opinion alone. Disclaimer, I do not represent my current employer or any of my previous employers. That being said, the news, probably everybody has seen it. And if not, Microsoft decided to close four studios that were part of the Cinemax umbrella. And two out of those studios are legendary. So let's see one by one why closing that studio. So the first one is Alpha Dog, a mobile game studio that focuses on, on Mighty Doom. At least I think so. The reality is that the mobile market is no longer the golden goose that people used to say it was. The mobile market used to be low budgets, great return, great revenues, high profit. As studios tend to move towards that, even bigger studios tend to move towards that, uh, the market saturation and the more a market saturated, the more marketing you need to invest in order for that game, like for your games to succeed. So it's no longer this golden goose. Sometimes budgets for mobile games are bigger than AAA games. Those rated Shadow Legends ads are pricey. <laughs> so the mobile market is no longer this big thing. So it, it makes sense that Microsoft will try to refocus this attempt into creating a game for mobile market might not have been what they expected and they close it down. It's not great. It's not a great decision, but I think the decision starts from the moment they decided to focus a game on the mobile market at this moment, especially with the Doom IP. Mobile market tends to be big in Asia. Uh, we see it in games like Genshin Impact, most of MiHoYo games, for example. The reason is because like the mobile markets uh, are attracted to like a different aesthetic that is not Doom. <laughs> so by making Mighty Doom, yeah, it's low budget, but I don't think it was a successful game. After that was Roundhouse Games. Roundhouse Games was a support studio. I think they work on Redfall. I understand why they did this one. They were already support. They're merging. They're merging Roundhouse. They're not cl technically closing Roundhouse. They're merging it into Cinemax. They're just cutting the middleman for support. That makes sense. Uh, I don't think it's ideal, but is the least of all the evils that we've seen on this news. Then we go to one of the big ones, Arcane Studios. Arcane Austin, I actually interviewed with them last year for a senior combat design role on Redfall because I was in the process to work for uh, post launch. But even back then, they closed the position, they stopped hiring, and uh, I was left in the dark. I was really excited for that one to grow that game. Uh, it was an exciting prospect, and they were really proud of it. And the reason they were really proud of it is because they made it against insurmountable odds. First thing, it was like an online multiplayer game, first person shooter. It was heavily inspired by Far Cry, I think we, we know, but it was not their usual development. It was not their usual game, but they show like a lot of grit by making it, especially by shifting to Unreal Engine. That was not their engine. This is their first game. This is the first game in Arcane's history that is just Unreal. And a lot of people might not know, but Unreal tends to be quite difficult to work with, with online components. We see it a lot in uh, in uh, fighting game multiplayer. Uh, a lot of people ask for uh, features like rollback netcode and improving the netcode. But the reality is that in order to improve netcode in Unreal, you need to go deep. You need to rewrite netcode. I know this, I used to work with a programmer from Tekken 7 and how they had to rewrite the whole netcode to implement rollback on those games. So that's why it takes so long to implement those. And imagine you're not used to that engine. The scope of your game is way bigger than a fighting game and it's focused on game of service. I am so sorry, Arcane Austin. You, you are a fantastic studio. And I think Prey will always be remembered as one of the great immersive sims. It's a shame. It is really a shame. And we go to the next one, this Tango with Gameworks, which this one, in my opinion, hurts even more because I thought Hi-Fi Rush was fantastic. Came out of nowhere. I, I'm pretty sure it sold almost a million copies in Steam alone, not counting Xbox. And then it was sent there like crippled because it was put on Game Pass day one with no marketing. It was shallow dropped in the middle of a presentation and hope that word to mouth would like carry that game. Well, guess what it did? And it showed the talent of Tango Gameworks. And then the game got re-released on PlayStation recently. And I'm pretty sure the, the, the strategy team in Microsoft were like, this is it. We're going to make more money. But 
boom they came to the realization that the game already sold not just that it's on game pass and it has been on steam for a long time and i mean a long time so you come out and release the game on playstation and then say you expect it to sell the same number no you cripple your own game microsoft you did that you cripple your own game game pass cripples your games it's no longer the model that you thought it was I'm gonna let you in in a little secret. The majority of Game Pass users, they pay for a month, they play what they want, and then they unsubscribe. Because you put your day one games there. It makes no sense. It makes no sense from the beginning. Arcane Austin releases Redfall, which wasn't successful. And then Tango Gameworks releases Ghostwire Tokyo, which was not successful. It didn't sell that well. So now these two guys had like, oh, you guys have a games that didn't sell well. You're going to close them down. Why you didn't do that when Sea of Thieves came out originally and it didn't sell well? It was a disaster. But you stuck with Sea of Thieves. You stuck with Rare. But now you're not going to stop. It's not that you're missing money, dude. You're Microsoft. It's not that you're struggling for money. The studios you have that have really good talent. Hi-Fi Rush could have been a multimedia franchise. People would have loved that. It had that Scott Pilgrim vibe had that rock vibe, amazing charm. You had it there. You could have built an IP, an actual IP, but no. And you know why all this happened, everybody? You know why this happened? Because of Starfield. The, the, the chips are aligned, like the points connect. They are streamlining Cinemax because Cinemax is not delivering. And Cinemax is not delivering because Microsoft put all its eggs in Starfield. And guess what happened with Starfield? It did not burn the internet ablaze. It wasn't this huge success that they expected because they pushed for the marketing and they were really pushing. They had exclusive events, trailers everywhere. They pushed for Starfield and it didn't do as well. well you know why? Because Starfield disappointed. Why is Starfield disappointed? The reality is that if you dig deep all the way down, Starfield didn't sell because they're using antiquated technology. Their engines are ancient. I work with people from Bethesda. I remember Skyrim just came out and the design director came to my school back then. And I raised my hand and I asked him, hey, there's a mod for Skyrim that gives multiplayer. Why didn't Bethesda make multiplayer to begin with? His answer was because multiplayer made my teeth hurt. By Skyrim time, the engine was already difficult. Now add all the years, but they refused to move along. They refuse to make so they keep adding on top of it. They refuse to move along. Their technical people are living. I know several technical people that are living in Bethesda on their own accord. I work with the lead programmer of Fallout 4 and Skyrim, and he had stories. They're working with ancient technology. And then, of course, the game didn't deliver. It's like barely stitched together. It's not the Bethesda promise. It's not what people wanted, the exploration. The one thing that the Bethesda has done, great, exploration. They mess it up. And then because of that, who pays? Well, not Todd Howard, not Bethesda, not the main guys. Who else had a little bit of a downer? Well, Tango and Austin. Arcane Austin, mm, close those down. Is that simple, guys? Is that simple of a decision? Is this lack of vision that Microsoft has? I've seen it firsthand. Microsoft doesn't have a plan. When they go in, oh, there's like a lot of freedom for developers. There's like, do what you want, you know? But for what I know, and if anybody works with Microsoft, this is again my experience, but if anybody works with Microsoft, Put in the comments below if I'm wrong. But they don't have that plan. If you work with Sony, Sony has a plan. That plan is sometimes not ideal. That makes sense. You know, it happens. It really, it happens from time to time. But it, they have a plan. Microsoft buys and says, do what you want. To a lot of studios, like, just do what you want. What do you want? Just make it. But they give you the money, but they don't give you the support. When you work with Sony, even as, not necessarily as a first party, as a third party, they will bring developers from other studios to support you. I work with amazing people from God of War Ragnar or, or Horizon or Guerrilla because it will bring people to support. Sony opens studios exclusively for support. Microsoft does not. We have never heard that. So the reality is that Microsoft doesn't have a plan. And now the, the great studios are paying for it because Hi-Fi Rush was successful. I mean, it's just that it was, that's the one that hurts me the most. Don't get me wrong, Arcane Austin is, was great. Great. 
Prey was a fantastic game, a true immersive thing. And I think Redfall had potential. It could have, you know? I was going in to help with it. I was excited for it. I passed their test. They were gonna work on something new really soon as well. Tango Gameworks, it was their only Japanese studio. Now that I think about it, their only Japanese studio. That's why Shinji Mikami left. He knew, he probably knew. And it's all to streamline Bethesda. It's all to not stop the flow of cash towards main Bethesda, to justify their buy. The reality is that all the crazy acquisitions that Microsoft has been doing, if you actually calculate the money they spent, just the Activision Blizzard transaction, I'm pretty sure you and I, you watching this video and I, we're gonna be dead and they would still have not made profit. I'm pretty sure. I really don't think Microsoft has a plan and this is symptoms of that. I'm Santi, this is the Game Design Perspective. Have a good one, guys.